Hi, this is Udi Tirosh with DIYphotography.net and I'm very excited to be here in the Dobo headquarters in Shenzhen, China. Today is not going to be about photography, today is going to be about DIYing. I'm here because Dobot are having another Kickstarter and it's called the Dobot M1. Now Dobot already had a Kickstarter for this arm and it went pretty well. It raised over $650,000 and today they're back with another campaign for a bigger, more industrial arm and it's the Dobot M1. What's exciting about this arm is that it can 3D print, it can laser engrave, it can use for repeated industrial tasks, 3D print with two colors, it can use for soldering, it can use for picking up stuff depending on their color. It's actually quite exciting. Let me go over the dry specs with you. So the Dubot M1 is an industrial grade robotic arm. It has 0.2 millimeter precision. The range is 150 millimeters and if you can put it on rails to extend that, it can carry a payload of up to 1.5 kilos and it's as fast as 200 degrees per second or 3,000 millimeters per second. You gotta admit, that's pretty impressive. So we're gonna run the Dubot M1 through its paces in the next two days. Stick with us and see how it goes. So as we told you, this is not the first Kickstarter for uh, Dobot. And I've asked them to have a look at their factory just to see what it's all about. So right behind me is their second version of their first Kickstarter and it's called the Dubot Magician. So it's a little bit smaller. It's more for the home base or the consumer market. And this is their durability rig. They're checking to see that the robots are functioning and that they are ready to be shipped. And actually, I'm quite impressed with the factory. We're gonna have a look around. Um, come with me. This is uh, version two. Hello, little guy. Let me shake hands with that. <laughs> well done. The first feature we tested for the Dubot arm is the 3D printing. Now, we used PLA because it does not support ABS. It does print in the open air. And what I'm gonna do, I've asked one of the engineers to make a nice DIY stamp. Um, I'm gonna start printing. When you're printing on PLA, you do not need an enclosure. And what makes it nice that if you put the Dubot arm on a rail, you can actually print things that are almost unlimited in size. And I'm gonna see how it turned out. I'm gonna make some cookies with it, or Play-Doh with it, or I'm gonna see what's going on. Here's the cookie cutter we've made. So, it's pretty smooth. This is what I expect from a 3D printer. It has a mirror DIY here, and I'm gonna test it out. One thing to note is that the computer stopped during the 3D printing, and it had a little uh, PLA residue over here. This is very exciting. I'm gonna take some Play-Doh, and... <gasps> This is amazing, I'm gonna try another color. So again, here comes the squishing, and ta-da! Well, I'm having so much fun, let's, let's do a pink one. And the final cookie, so here we go, I'm pretty happy. Let's move on to the next test. So one thing I was excited about was the engraving function of the Dubot M1. And I asked the team here if they could engrave the DIYP logo. We're gonna try it on paper. It's laser, so we have to goggle up. And I'm goggling up. So that went pretty well, and I'm gonna risk my wallet now. And there you have it. It's the first DIY photography wallet. Um, it's actually kind of nice. The only thing is that the DIY is kind of burned out. And I asked the team about this. They said that the laser was too strong. We, can, we should have reduced the laser speed, the laser power. Other than that, I'm pretty happy. I'm definitely keeping this. I don't know if you know how robots works. I didn't, so I got an explanation. Um, one of the ways to operate robots is to set waypoints and then have the robot move from a waypoint to waypoint. Kind of like planning a route on your GPS uh, navigator or on Google Maps. So how do you set those waypoints? Well, one way to set those waypoints is simply to take the robot and position it in the various places that you want to set it to. And I'll be doing this later. But then another very exciting thing that I have here is a wireless mouse. So I'm going to try and pick one of those batteries and see if that works. Um, now, as a kid, 
Do you know those games where you have to pick a teddy bear out of a big glass thing? I never got the teddy bear, so this uh, this is very exciting for me. I think I may actually, I think I may actually manage to, this one activates the pump. Yes. And there I have it. What do you say? I want the teddy bear. This is actually a lot easier than I thought it would be, and it's, it's really a lot of fun. I don't know if you've ever set waypoints on a robotic arm before, but it's, it's somewhere between science and art, and there's a lot of guesstimating where the 3D grid that you're seeing on the computer screen will end up in real life. But this, this is just fun. I'm gonna win one last teddy bear. And this is it. On to the next test. The next system that we tested was the visual detection system, and I was quite impressed with that. Uh, you know how you have actors that want only the brown M&Ms or only the green M&Ms? This is what we set out to test. So I just took a bunch of M&Ms, spilled them under the robot, and let the robot detect them and sort them into beans. I have to say, this is quite impressive. If you're ever, ever dealing with an annoying artist that only wants the yellow M&Ms, this is something you definitely want to test out. Remember how I told you that setting waypoints is a drag? This is another way of setting waypoints that is actually quite easy. So the idea is that you move the dubot around, you put it in the place that you want, and then you press a button and the dubot remembers that location. Then you can move from one place to another to teach the robot how to move. I'm gonna try and do a light painting of a pentagram and we're gonna see how that goes. So this is the first point. And we're moving into the second point of the star. The third point. And the fourth point. And finally, we're going back to the start. If this is going to be a pentagram, I'm gonna die. Let's, let's run it. One thing that is still missing on the application is that you can only do this horizontally. You cannot move the robot up and down. But Dubo tells me that this will be fixed in one of the future versions. So one of the things that I was concerned about is how easy it is to replace heads. I mean, it does 3D printing, 3D printing with two colors, it does laser engraving, it can use for soldering, and each of those applications requires a different head. So I was concerned that maybe it takes a little bit of fiddling. I asked the guys here to show me how to swap heads, and they showed me and they all went away. So I'm gonna try one of my own. So this is the laser engraving head. It connects to the laser thing. There's a fan and a laser and it connects here, so you unplug this, and there's a small screw on the bottom. It's not the most convenient screw, but you know, it's okay. And then the top comes off, so you go like this. It takes a little bit of effort, and the head goes off. And then this is a different kind of head. I think this is the pick and pack head, and it slides in here, locks into place, and then you put the plastic cup again, and you put a screw again. How easy is that? And if there are any external things, like for the laser, so the wire will come up the top and connect. So for example, this is the, this is the wire for the pick and pack. So it has a vacuum air compressor on the back, so you can just connect it here on the bottom. So with all the Dubot functions, I was kind of concerned how easy it's going to be to control and how complex will be the software. How much will we have to learn in order to use the thing? The text show me around the software and I'm gonna show you now. Uh, this is the main screen that you're seeing and this is where you control the various functions of the Dubot. And this is what will show you that you can uh, learn the robot, how to move and how to interact with its environment. Uh, there is a visual scripting language, it's called the Blockify, and then you can use visual blocks. If you don't know how to program, you can use those to make the robot move and act. It's quite cool and it's very nice with kids, so you have your ifs and your loops and your whiles, just like what you'd be regular from any programming language. But, if you prefer some more control, you can actually use a Python script to write whatever you want and make the robot work. Um, they also support C++, C, they come with pretty much several wrapper library already. Uh, there, there are hand gestures if you want to support that to attach a hand gestures device. 
and this is the laser engraving interface so right here you see the general area where you can engrave and if you want to put something uh, inside that area you just drop the photo that you want to use and the laser engraver will trace it and put it on your on your item and the last thing that I wanted to show you is the 3d printing interface and if you've done any kind of 3d printing you're probably familiar with this this is a simplified 3d this is the actual software that I'm using back home um, and you just um, I'm gonna load something let's see what they have here uh, maybe a phase. Once you've done this, you export the STL into G code and load that into the Dubot. And you can use two colors, it will print that. I'm pretty impressed with the software. I think it's not bad for the amount of functionality and quite easy to handle. I got back and I was really impressed with the Dubot arm. Uh, I'm definitely getting one, you may want to get one too. If you're in on the early bird, it's $1,000. Those are probably all gone. Um, so it starts at roughly $1,300 for the basic kit. And if you go all the way up, it goes up to 35,000, I think. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool if you're doing any kind of DIY. I definitely recommend it. Go and get one on their Kickstarter now. I'll be seeing you around. If you like some more cool movies, you can check out this one and this one, and you can subscribe to us down here.